Hey, everybody. Welcome to Wednesday's devotional. I'm so glad that you chose to join us today as we grow together in God's word. You know, I love the fact that through these devotionals, we've been able to read the same word and grow together as the body of Christ. So I want to take a second and just encourage you, share these devotionals. Allow other people to join this journey with us. We would love to get more people on board. We've been following Pastor Rachel's sermon on Sunday on Mother's Day about surrender. And she told the story of Jacob wrestling with God. And earlier this week, Colleen talked about the first half of that wrestling match. And today we're gonna talk about the second half of that wrestling match. Now, I love competition. I love to see what happens in the end. So we're gonna find out here what happens to Jacob. Two things I want you to remember as we go through this devotional, Jacob was renamed and he was reminded. And my prayer today that as we read this scripture and look at some observations, that we can remember that God wants to do that for us too. He wants to rename and remind us. So let's read this passage, Genesis chapter 32, verses 27 through 32. It says, what is your name? The man asked, he replied, Jacob, your name will no longer be Jacob, the man told him. From now on, you will be called Israel because you have fought with God and with men and have won. Please tell me your name, Jacob said. Why do you want to know my name, the man replied. Then he blessed Jacob there. Jacob named the place Peniel, which means face of God. For he said, I have seen God face to face, yet my life has been spared. The sun was rising as Jacob left Peniel and he was limping because of the injury to his hip. So right away in this passage, we see that Jacob's name was changed, completely changed. Now this is so significant because Jacob is actually a twin and he wasn't the firstborn twin, he was born second. So Esau came first and then Jacob came second. And this was huge because in this culture, the firstborn, got the blessing, they got the birthright, they got all the good stuff. And so Jacob is the second born. And Jacob was actually named um, Jacob because it means trickster, deceiver, and heel grabber. I think it's interesting that he was named this. I don't know about you, but I would hate to be named liar. That just does not sound like a fun name to have, but Jacob lived up to his name. You see, he tricked his brother Esau into getting the birthright and he became a liar. He got the blessing from the father when it did not belong to him. So he lived up to his name. Now, where we pick up in this passage, 15 years have passed and Jacob is coming back home. Now, Esau in the past, 15 years ago, was very upset with Jacob. He wanted to kill him. He was just angry. He was plotting to kill him. And this is a time where Jacob is getting ready to go back. But Jacob is alone with God and he has an encounter with God and he clings to God. And he says, don't, I will not let you go until you bless me. You see, I believe that Jacob wanted to receive a true blessing, not the kind that comes through deception or through tricking, but he wanted the real thing. He had this moment with God and he wanted the real thing. And in that moment, God changes his name. He changes his name from deceiver, from Jacob to Israel. Not only would this become his new name, but this would be the name of the nation, Israel. That nation was comprised of the 12 tribes that were a part of Jacob's descendants. So this was huge. He changed his name. And then we see that Jacob wanted to make sure he would never forget this moment. Look at the verse right there in verse 30. It says, he renames the location Peniel, which means the face of God. He did not want to forget this encounter with God. He also walked away with a limp. He walked away with this limp. Now we're not sure if this was permanent or this was a temporary injury, but the one thing we do know is he was physically affected by God. He was physically affected by God. God had broken something inside Jacob. He was changed and he would remember this. Now, 
let's talk about what does this mean for us? How can we apply this? The first thing I want to encourage you is that you can be renamed, renamed. You know, I don't know about you, um, but I remember being younger and hearing names called about me. People would say, well, Marla, she's just fill in the blank. And I don't know if you've ever received a label. You know, maybe it was something that discouraged you or made you have low self-esteem and, and, and it put you in this box and you even maybe lived up to it like Jacob did. Maybe you're doing that now. Jacob was called deceiver and he lived up to that. But God changed his name. And just like Jacob, when we encounter God, he will change us. He changes our future. No matter where we've been in the past, he completely shifts that. And he wants to do that for us. He wants to label you as his son or his daughter. You are a child of God. He names you as that. So he wants to rename you. And the second thing is we need to be reminded. Just like Jacob, who walked around with a limp, he was reminded of that encounter with God. We can't forget about those moments where God is blessing us. You know, today I was sitting in my um, backyard and I had this, I heard this noise and I live right behind a, um, a nursing home and through the, there's trees in between the yards so you can't really see, but I kept hearing cars honking their horns and I kept hearing shouts and I saw balloons and posters through the trees and Frank Sinatra was playing over someone's car audio system. And I just thought, here this parade is reminding these residents who have been closed in of the faithfulness of God, that they are loved. And that's what God wants us to do. You know, that moment made me so emotional hearing that, hearing people shout Happy Mother's Day to those residents. God shouts to us to remind us that He has blessed us and that He wants to bless us, that we are sons and daughters of the King. And God does this so we'll build our faith. When we take time to remember what God has done in our life, He builds our faith. And you know, I wanna challenge you today. Take some time today to write down what God has done for you. Maybe it's today, maybe it's this week, but be very specific. God, this is what you have done for me. You'll be amazed at what that will change, how that will change your perspective. So I truly believe when we read this scripture, God wants to tell us we can be renamed and we can be reminded. Can I pray for you? Lord, I thank you so much for today. I thank you, God, that just like for Jacob, when he had an encounter with you, everything changed. Lord, I pray that not only would we take on what you want to call us, but God, that we would be reminded that meeting with you changes everything. So Lord, right now, wherever anyone is that's listening to this devotional, I pray that you meet them where they are. God, that they would truly have an encounter with you and that their lives would be forever changed. We love you. We praise you. This is your day and we remember all the things you have done for us. We are grateful in Jesus' name, amen.